Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Scratch Track Podcast presented by the Dude and Grim Show and co-produced by Mr. I-V-E-S-T. I am the Dude. And I am Grim. And today we are doing a full scratch on the Red Hot Chili Peppers Californication. Woohoo! Very cool. And, um, you know, if you like this episode and you like reviews, we also did one last year or the year before on Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Yeah, so, so go ahead and check uh, that out. Like, subscribe, and exactly. comment below. Um, dude, this, um, first off, I just got to say, it had been a long time since I sat down and just listened to this album all yeah. the way through. And I had so much fun, man, listening to this again because, like, when this came out in 99, like I, I, it was one of the albums I was like, I heard, you know, I think Scar Tissue was the first single and I was like, wow, this is pretty good. So I was like, boom, went to the store, man, picked up the album and I was just blown away by it. I mean, I listened to this a lot and, you know, came out June 8th, 1999. So like that whole summer and fall, basically yeah. like, dude, there's a lot of singles on this album and it was on the radio all the time. Yeah, and for some reason, this reminds me of the first year of college, too. I I, I mean, not that okay. it just kind of carried in that far apart. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. It just kind of carried into that. And um, yeah, I, I, I have very fond memories of of this album. I remember going on a road trip with you uh, somewhere by Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And driving back and yeah. listening to this album a lot. Oh, pad road tripping yeah. with my well, my one yeah. favorite ally in this case. But. Exactly. <laughs> was, yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, man. And dude, I, I think uh, you know. I, I know we didn't talk about this beforehand when we were talking about the album, but uh, at least in my mind, this has got to be the greatest comeback album that i can think of for a band yeah it's it's pretty good because i think a lot of people thought um that at the time um one one hot minute yeah one hot minute came out which is too bad because there is a lot of great stuff on one hot minute i mean dude p uh, just alone let's just throw p out there that's dude, one of the best neither. tracks um but I, I actually liked a lot of the stuff off One Hot Minute. But yeah, it did. Although there were some some singles and some videos on MTV, it did, it did not get the reception that Blood Sugar Sex Magic had got before it. And then this yeah. had. And I think a lot of that had to do with the departure of John Frusciante, um, I, I believe, in the middle of the tour for Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And then That's what I think I think it was, too. you know, he went into rehab um, and, I, and I believe it was Flea yeah. who convinced him to come back for this one. And yep. they let Dave Navarro go, which I think was a very good decision because I, I don't just didn't fit. man. Yeah, I just I don't dislike what he did, but he does not bring to the table what for Shante does. Well, the, the thing was, too, is like when you think about these guys and obviously you know it's been well documented with everything with hell slovak and mm -hmm. whatnot but um you know these guys got together especially anthony and and flea got together so young that they they just grew up together and they have such a a brotherly bond you can yeah. really tell that these guys are really close and um, even after Hillel passed away and John Frusciante took over, I felt like he almost fit in seamlessly yes. with them and fit their personalities. And I don't know if Dave Navarro ever had that. Doesn't mean he's not a good musician. Doesn't mean he can't play. But I think from an emotional. Doesn't and, mean he's not a good dude. You know, yeah. Yeah. Friendship standpoint. Looks weird I as hell. Don't, but. Uh, well, hey, well, you got Carmen Electra. So, wow. Well, but yeah. a lot of a lot of people got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people's girlfriends are back there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but I would say that this to me sort of like marks what I call like part two of the oh, yeah. Chili Peppers. Yep. Because, I mean, dude, they had put out, this is their seventh studio album. They that, had put out some stuff that is before, nuts. before this, man. That, that is absolutely crazy. Like, I bet if you asked somebody, they would be like, oh, yeah, this is like their fourth like or fifth. Four, four, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, probably if you would ask me, I probably would have said that. But, um, you know, I, I had I remember in high school before this album came out and they already had a Red Hot Chili Peppers greatest hit. Yeah. I like got at the store. Yeah. I mean, it, was, it, was, it was crazy, man. So, um, 
But, you know, I, I just think, uh, you know, one hot minute, I'm, I'm really glad they moved on. I'm really glad that John Frusciante kind of turned his life around and was able to get stuff back together. And man, I'll tell you what, like after, you know, all his trials and tribulations, I feel like with this album, they did not skip a step. Like, no, they, not at all. You know, and I, and I, mean, I know some people think that they did because um, there there was some negative criticism in the fact that like this wasn't just them playing funk, and and I think it's funny because although you could sit there and say yes, uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic on the whole was maybe funkier. Absolutely, yeah. yeah there sure. were still departures in that There's album. Still those elements, you know. The there were still man. departures yep. into other areas, and people seem to forget that. And they just, to me, did that a little more. They didn't lose their roots in how they started in that sound. I mean, yep. dude, the first track comes in, and and it's it's pretty evident that. Like, like, you know, they, they didn't decide to just go adult contemporary. Like, the funk was no, still there yeah. for them. Yeah, yeah. And there's some songs in here. Once we start going through track by track, dude, there's some songs in here that have some serious funk. Oh, like, yeah. Serious funk. Yeah, man. some so, of the best stuff I think um, they've done. Yeah. And it, it's um, funny because it's it's just under an hour. But to me, the yeah. album the album goes very quickly. Dude, yeah. I mean, it's 15 songs. Um, but it, it know, seems they, to the, go very quickly. Yeah. Now, I was when I was reading up on this, and they were initially, I think, with John Frusciante, they were kind of trying to figure out, okay, we're all going to get back together. We're going to do something. Like, you know, what? how do we want this to sound? What do we want it to be? And I guess I think Flea was the one who actually suggested that they record like an album with electronic influences, kind of like um, U2, like U2 yeah. did and everything. And dude, he basically, basically, yeah, he said that, uh, you know, they were turned down by all these music, uh, electronic music producers. They just didn't want to do it. And David Bowie was even one of them. Who's That's just like, yeah. weird to me, because to me, yeah. I'm like, if you're somebody who's a producer and you have this band that has such roots in rhythm, and, and that's the thing, like funk is is to me more about rhythm than than anything else, mm -hmm. and they got such a uh, such roots in that, like, man, why wouldn't you give that a go? What do you have to lose? Well, I, I think I, I think there was probably you know some cons they did have a reputation as as a band and how they worked, okay, and, you know you know with. Um, and they even talk a little bit about it. Um, you know, Rick Rubin even said when he was talking about these sessions compared to sessions from the past where he was like, yeah, like sessions from the past, they'd just sit around and smoke pot all day and be having women over and it wouldn't be overly productive. Yeah, right? yeah, professional sure. And everything. But he said with these sessions, man, they were tight and they came in and, um, you know, leading up to it, they had actually pretty much written i think they said like 30 to 40 songs in in flea's garage and then they went into the studio put down their tracks but dude it said it said they recorded in five days yeah and that's like, that's that pretty interesting is... and and when you look at it i mean it said uh one thing that i read was that most of it was done by all of them simultaneously in the same, in the same room. room and that right. they wanted sort of I don't want to say a dry sound, but sort of a more like not this huge room sort of thing so that they mic'd all yeah. the instruments very closely and all this. And they recorded yeah. it on tape. And it's funny because, OK, so they record it on tape and then they transfer it to Pro Tools. And then when it comes time to mix it, they ended up <laughs> mixing it from the tape. Oh, that's yeah. that's what they ended up doing. The mixes from was from the tape. Interesting. Dude, at 30 inches per second. Yeah, I don't now, know what that means. Well, it's it's the rate of speed that the tape is moving, 30 inches per second. Now right, like 24 frames a second, like in video and film and stuff. But yeah. But I imagine if you go a faster or slower, that's gonna adjust the sound a little bit, right? Like, well, yeah, but dude, <laughs> I have a I have a reel to reel. Now granted, it is not the Ampex 24 track two inch tape you know machine like that's in studios. But dude, this thing goes at either seven inches per second. Or three and a half if you hit the button and slow it down to half speed. Dude, 30 inches per second is fucking screaming. Like, that is moving so fast. Think about it. Okay. 30 inches is two yeah. and a half feet per second All that's right. flying through All that right. thing. That makes sense now. Okay. 
Wow. That is, that is very, yeah, it's, very it's just, fast. they're, they're very, very fast. fast. Yeah. I, you know, we haven't <laughs> been to shakies in so long, but I was just, uh, it was interesting to me that like when it all came down, that's what they ended up using to mix the album was the analog tape, even though they yeah, did all this other right. shit, which kind of speaks right. to how people still tend to record when they can. I mean, I've only recorded using pro tools because Dude, recording with tape is is like a very prohibitively it's expensive. Expensive. Yeah. 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 Um, well, dude, I think it's interesting. You know, I was talking about how this this is I think it is this is their comeback album. Yeah. Right. And what I love though is they use so much sort of, you know, inspiration and so much of the theme was just based on, you know, everything they'd gone through and experienced. Cause man, like dude think about as a band like i mean these guys weren't even that old at the time that they recorded this and all that they had had gone through throughout their lives they'd already they'd already reached the mountaintop oh right been addicted like, to drugs been off of drugs, drugs had one of their best friends died. die yeah i mean it's it's insane dude it yeah. just i i mean uh, aside from that if you if if any of the listeners ever get a chance flea wrote this book called acid for children that talks about his experiences as being like a latchkey kid in the 70s in la and dude it sounds crazy as shit and that was just his <laughs> childhood like before the band and yeah. he talks about like yeah. meeting anthony kiedis and like that in the beginning they weren't necessarily like best friends. They were like the yeah. two, the two people who are friends, but like kind of push each other in the wrong direction a little bit, like egg each other on, you know, I can see I can see that. Yeah. I can definitely see that. Um, well, I, I think before we get into the tracks, we did want to kind of talk a little bit about oh, the, sort of the reception of, of, of the mastering and the sound of the album, because, you know, it's something that I guess, I don't want to say like I never noticed it. Maybe I just didn't care, you know, but once I started reading more about it, like people are actually upset and don't like the way that this album sounds and the way it's mastered. A lot of people would consider it a victim of what uh, what's considered the loudness wars. Yeah. Which is just trying to make everything louder than the next one and, louder. And, you know, it, it, it's funny because I read that and then I listened back to it. And I think you can hear some of that. I, I think that the dynamic contrast is is somewhat less, right? Sure. Like it doesn't it doesn't get super quiet and then loud. It's always even when there's a single instrument playing or a few instruments playing, it's still at a fairly elevated loud level throughout. I'd I'd actually like to see what the waveforms look like. And I know that's a super <laughs> yeah. nerdy thing, but that kind of that kind of does say something. Right. And yeah, that was that was kind of a thing at this point in time. Everybody's doing it. Yeah. And, and I yeah. think you can hear it. But to me, I don't find it as a detractor from listening to the album. I think that now that somebody brought it to my attention, I can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't unhear it now. But probably. but I don't dislike it. I still no. think it's I mean, a dude. great record. And uh, there's been a lot of records that have been made sort of in that with, with that sort of style in mind. Yep. I mean, yeah. okay, go, um, blue color of the sky is a really it's good not, example, Yeah. but that's, the, well, it's funny. Cause yeah, they even talk about in that interview, how they, they didn't, you know, whatever they, that's like the way they recorded it. Like it had nothing to do with how they processed it after or any, any kind of well, compression or anything they did on it yeah so yeah it it, it, it wasn't yeah it wasn't i think friedman was talking about there was no master bus compression on the tracks but that's what he said yeah compression is different than peak limiting and basically compression takes the waveform and kind of squishes everything into this sort of area funnel and yeah, everything yeah. kind of goes into that area and is louder but all peak limiting does is kind of cuts off the top before it would make it crunch. Right. So it gives right. you a very similar sort of effect, you know, and yeah. And I I don't hate that. Um I don't think it's right for everything, but I certainly don't hate it and there's some things it works very well with and I think it works very well with this album. 
Hated it. All right. Um, yeah. Now, before the tracks, <laughs> too, there was, as much as this got widely, uh, highly acclaimed, there were some people who did not dig it. And it was interesting to me because a lot of what I, what I read, people cited the fact that it was a departure from kind of their funk roots. Yeah. Which I disagree with. The whole album is not funk. They kept no. that and they expanded and with their that sort of and rock sound. Yeah. So what I mean, what do you want? Uh, you got to figure the band isn't going to make blood sugar sex magicer, you know, like, well, yeah. Well, and that would have been also would have been such a weak move to be agreed. like, hey, we're going to do blood sugar sex magic. Dave Navarro comes in. We do one hot minute. That doesn't do awesome. We're going to bring John Trefreshani back in, and then we're going to just go back to this the exact same thing that we've been doing. Yeah, I, I think you know, this that we was, did before because it worked, and that's what they bought. So, and and we'll get into this in the tracks, but I think that as much as I I guess I could say that going forward, um, I have not been as much of a huge fan of some of the stuff. This did kind of set that path. Like it or not, it, it just did. Yeah, it did. It did. I agree. I agree. Um, well, uh, I think we're about ready. Yeah, to I think tracks, we got to get into say. it. Yeah. And so, everyone, this is the point in the show where we go through the album track by track. Can I count we it off? Talk, we kind of talk about them a little bit. And uh, yeah, and we uh, basically end up scratching one of them. Yeah. Could be a fan favorite. Could be one that I love and... Grim hates, which will probably be the case in this one, because I already think I know what he's gonna, what he's gonna scratch. Well, so. you, you don't know yet. It's, mm. you know, we we just don't know. We just don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. So here we go. I can't have it now. Yeah. Track number one, around the world. Um, yeah. So don't is, don't tell it, me that they don't go back to the funk roots when the, when the album starts with around the world. Yeah. It uh, it definitely, man, th- dude. Just the way this song comes in, man. It just like oh, I felt it like hits you right it's in the like, face. Yeah, and it's it's almost kind of like saying, "Hey, hey, remember us?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, we, like uh, you you might have forgot. We're back. <laughs> but one yeah. thing I like is that after sort of that um the big intro. I, and this, this I think, holds true to a lot of Frusciante's parts. Um, they're sort of understated. And that's not to say that they're underplayed because they're the right parts. But he just doesn't have to make a big thing out of it. It's more about the rhythm than, yeah. than it is about yeah. this harmonic complexity. You yeah, know? sometimes, dude, sometimes it's just about playing the right notes, not the most notes. Yeah, and just that, <laughs> you, know? Da, 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 you know, like it just it yeah. just works. And dude, Flea's, yeah. Flea's bass is just, oh my when gosh. that comes in, it's. Like, dude, I, I've i never played a bass. I don't really know anything about bass. I've lift, listened to enough music, though, where I'm like, I have never heard anyone like him. Like, in anyone who plays like that. In in a genre like this, yeah, man. he just what he does is just it is mind blowing, and I can't say like you know when you do listen to other bands that try to like do do a lot of fancy bass stuff, I'm kind of like like I don't really like to hear it, but when he does it, oh, man, I like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. The only the only person in the '90s that I think could be in the same level, and granted, they were much more of a rock band. Um, is it Dean or Robert DeLeo? I forget. I was but dude. Mixed up. I, he is a monster too, but it, it's more in a rock setting. It's not funk like Flea plays, but it's just I'm I, I can only say that because you're talking about two bands from the same time period, and he is like one of those bass players. Where you're like I've I've never heard a rock bass player like that. Like it, you know. Right. But but Flea is just dude. He can slap it. He can he can just do everything. And then he's in the fucking Big Lebowski. I mean, so there's that. So yeah, I mean, also he's got a hell of a movie career. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's also Needles in Back to the Future Part 2. <laughs> I don't know which role is better, but we should do an episode on the best roles of Flea. Oh, yeah. Okay. To be continued. Yeah. That's coming soon. Yeah. Too. So, dude, Podcast comment New below. Year. Like, subscribe and comment You know, below. Your, your, uh, your comments on what is Flea's best role. Cause... Yeah. Other All than right, baseball. Moving on. 
Moving on. We got 15 tracks to get through on this one. Parallel so let's kind of get it going here. But dude, Parallel Universe. I, dude, I love the beginning of this song. Um, I've I've always liked this song. It's got this kind of like almost like this weird little scratching they do. Yeah. Kind of in the, in, in the beginning. And then, dude, the song just goes, man. And it just has this kind of like propelling motion to yeah. it. Like, dude, this is like a good song to run to or <laughs> something. That you know rhythm, what I mean? Again. Yeah. You know, one uh, thing um, I was going to say, <laughs> and it's it might seem weird, but the way this song sounds always reminds me of the music for Mega Man 2. I, I can't tell yeah, you why, dude, but it, it just 100%. Does. Mega yep, Man yep, 2. There is. Yeah, the NES yeah, there version, is. just to be clear, it, I think it's that. You mm-hmm. know, it, it is that 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 kind of kind of rhythm they have going. Um, now, I do in, in this song, I do hear a little crunch, and where I kind of hear it is where when he gets really big and loud, and he's he yeah. starts to sing, "Christ, Christ, I'm a sidewinder." Uh, you know, California whatever, I'm a California king. Um, that's when I. It's just like you do hear a little crunch there, but. I, I mean that kind of. I always liked the line "California King," and I didn't realize it at the time. But "California King" is actually a size of bed. Did you know that? Oh, there's well, there's King. I guess it is. There's King and there's California King, and California King is interesting because it's a little bit wider and a little bit shorter than a regular king. <laughs> Dude, that's kind. Of- yeah. Dude, that's a sweet line, man. I like. I know, that. I know, yeah. because once you know that, it's like it, a, just a little odd shape. Yeah, man, it, you know? it kind of yeah. works. Yeah. Now we will track number three, the first single off the album, which really, I mean, dude, when this song came out, it just blew up. Like it was oh, on the yeah. radio, just, just everything every, on the hour, every hour. Uh, dude, it was number one in the U.S. Oh, well, I should say scar tissue if I didn't name yeah. it already. But it, it was number one in the U.S. for 16 weeks. Wow. 16 weeks, dude. That's insane, man. Like It's four months. You know, and, dude, long time. Um, but, you know, one thing, that I, one thing that I think is really cool and, uh, you know, what I like about sort of this song and the name of it and sort of the, the message and everything is like how we were talking about earlier, dude. They had been through so yeah, much yeah. stuff, so many battle wounds and everything. And dude, you do have that scar tissue. Well, right? and in the You've video, kind of been beaten up in the video, yeah, in the video, yeah, of course, they did too. a good job yeah. with that. Now, um, one thing that I wanted to know is how he plays the guitar with with very simply with just a low note and a higher note, and kind of you know shapes these as he goes through, yeah. and. That sort of musical device is actually in use in pop music now. Um, okay. I don't like this person. I think he's he's a real tool. Um, but if you listen, there's a song out there that I believe is called Love Yourself by none other than the Biebs, Justin Bieber. Oh, okay. Listen right. to how they play guitar on that song and tell me you don't hear that coming from scar tissue in the way because i just i guess i hadn't really heard a lot of guitar parts like this and i think that Uh if you listen to that song and a lot of other stuff in modern day pop that's just like that you know just somebody singing about something that i'm sure is super emotional and important and they they kind of use that sort of musical musical device with the with the low note and the high note like very simple yeah. understated but i just i hadn't heard anything like that before and i think it continues to go on but not that there's ever first but in my mind this is the first for that right, right. Well, another thing that this song has, and I know it's one thing that you and i just love so much about the chili peppers is their use of the harmonies and oh yeah vocals. dude i just they're on this album i don't remember it so much on blood sugar sex magic and i haven't listened to one hot minute and uh it's one hot minute, hot minute. <laughs> yeah yeah so um but dude on this album their background harmonies and vocals are just so prevalent throughout and it's just their voices just mesh really well together but they're always when they do their background harmonies like they're always so high i know, you know? is it's that like everything doing is that? Like, i, I want to believe I, it's I think it's well they all get credit for background oh okay but i think it's okay dude for shante i remember seeing a live video and i remember for shante was doing uh a lot of, when they were playing live he was doing a lot of the the background harmonies and background vocals. oh interesting okay um, 
So, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think it's sort of a collective issue or a yeah. collective effort. Um, so the third or the fourth song, third single, Other Side. Oh, dude. I, if not my favorite Damn. top three. Oh, is it? Okay. Easily. Right. I, okay. I don't know. There was, it, it's just different. I, I, I really, I've always really liked it. Um, and as I listen to it again, one thing that stands out to me, and this is really technical and nerdy, but you listen to the way the snare sounds and you can tell that the snare was mic'd from the top of it because oh, okay. it has some of that ring. And, and the only thing I can compare it to is like Rage Against the Machine, Evil, Evil Empire, where it has like that ring to the snare as opposed to miking it underneath where the actual metal touches the the um the drum head underneath that's more like sure paper ish kind of and it has like that real sort of it's just it's it's not bad it's just something that i noticed listening to it now and like oh that's really that that's where you get to with music where you're like oh i really like the snare sound from (laughs) underneath you know it's like super nerdy but yeah um yeah man dude this is this is one of my more favorite songs on the album um, third single and, you, you said? Know, third single i guess is is what i had no- yeah. noted as um but i mean dude there was a bunch of singles off this album and i dude they are all they're all really good so. yeah um but yeah i mean you know i think dark they lyrics said that, like so, sort of anthony kiedis's motivation was like you know confronting you know the i, I guess addiction and the battles that addicts have to go through with prior addictions it's like you know it's not like you just it's not like you're an addict and you get over it and you're good like every day is, is a struggle yeah know, sure is, is a struggle and it is a fight so um yeah i mean I, I like how they just sort of take all those elements and everything they've been through and really just kind of dude th- this is a very honest album it's, yeah it's like a confess it's almost like a confession mm-hmm. like it's 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 really good so um <clears throat> well dude you want to get into some funk, man? Oh, dude, just get on top. Johnny Five Alive, mm. track number five. Get on top, man. Like, whoa. Like, dude, the intro is just so unbelievably nasty. Yeah. Like, you, you just, you can't say that they didn't, they, they just, like, gave up on funk. I mean, yeah. dude, they just crush it, crush it in the song. And to me, a lot of the, a lot of the ones on here, like, when they do it, it's, it's, meatier than it had been even in the past i would agree i or not agree yeah. but i would venture to say yeah well and you know we were talking a little bit uh you know offline about anthony kiedis and him as a vocalist and a singer and he he's very unique and in, yeah. in how he you know he can sing he can sing kind of straight he can sing falsetto he can um sort of sort of rap a bit right um and but dude they just do some cool things here. Like, like I love it when he sings like all in time. I don't know. Yeah. Oh dude. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. right. Eye. Yeah. The right. Eye. It's so good. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it, just doing fun things like that. Like that's, that's, that's pretty bad. Yeah. I do like that because it's, it's funny. You know, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And they had fun with this album. He even said that he was like, man, we're just having fun making music. Yeah. Again. And, and like, that's dude, what it should be about. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Number six, title the title track, track Grim. Um, yeah, dude, like they said they had a really hard time recording this. Like he just had kind of the lyrics down and like what he wanted to say and everything. But they were just having a tough time coming up with the music. Yeah, um, I, I guess I, w- I, I wouldn't thought that before reading it, but it is it is interesting. And I wouldn't say it's my favorite song on the album. But okay. for what it says lyrically, I think for a, oh. for a title track, I mean it. It kind of it really ties the room together, so to speak, dude. I it's mean, such it's, an honest oh, dude, such an honest song about California. I know, and and, and I like that because a lot of people have that view of California that it's just kind of this weird, fucked up place, and they yeah. really sort of capitalize on that and say it in a really honest way and i will say one thing uh that's irritating is if you type in californication into whatever your favorite search engine might be it kind of pisses me off that the tv show comes up first oh yeah it's a good show not as good as this album (laughs) but just yeah but yeah anyways 
Yeah. Dude, yeah. easily. Well, dude. Yeah. I mean, dude, some of the lyrics that he says, you know, um, you know, celebrity skin, is this your chin or is that war? Is that war you're waging? Yeah. Right? Like, it's just like, oh, you're fighting the battle. And then my other favorite line, which is actually one of my favorite lines of uh, almost any. It's one of my top lyrics is destruction leads to a very rough road, but it, but also, it also breeds, breeds creation. creation. Yeah, that's a, like, that's man, a good dude. one. That's pretty great. Yep. It's pretty, it's destroy, pretty great, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Track number seven. Easily. Easily. Now, I I don't exactly, I guess I didn't, you know, totally read into this and try to make some big extrapolation on what it means. But one thing yeah. that I like about it is, especially following Californication, I've always really loved the line about everything must go. Must go. That There's something, yeah. there's something about that, um, that like kind of... Uh, this sort of desperation with this place that you're at, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, it especially the idea of California and materialism. Yeah. And oh, sure. Look yeah. And consumption. And then it's like, Hey, you got to You got to shed get, all that. Yeah. Get, get rid of everything. Um, I also really like the, um, I guess I would call it a solo, but at the end, there's a couple of little short little solos, but then at the end, he changes it up a little bit and it's like, it's almost a little happier. It's like, is that that where he says, I don't want to be your little research monkey boy. (laughs) I don't want to be your little research monkey boy. I think that's a funny ass line. The the person that I am is only going to destroy. Going to calling. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's good. Yeah, no, it is pretty solid. So, if you were to have this on vinyl, this is actually where you would where you would um, uh, flip the vinyl. Well, it's I shouldn't two. say that. It's two, dude. It's two. It is. It is two. But actually, I saw a version somewhere where I think it was one, and this is where the split was. Dude, cannot happen. You can't fit it's on fifty six minutes. You can't yeah, do that. That's weird. I saw something where it was like side one and side two. I don't know. Maybe it was. I was looking at the cassette. I mean, oh two. yeah, yeah. Or the or the but, um. Oh, what were those the the video discs or laser disc? Or the, laser, the disc. laser disc. It is weird though. I don't know what the hell I was looking at because it did say like porcelain. I was like, ah, oh, that's an interesting, you know, when you flip it on whatever your device is. I was like, that's a weird one to. Well, to, that to honestly start easily could be with. the the flip from I would, record to record. I would love to. F- I would love to flip it on easily because that's a great way to start a side two. I think. Well, that could actually but. be the start of side three. I think they easily oh. might end side two and then. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, the rest maybe of porcelain. Is, uh, yeah. Porcelain might be the second start of the second disc. Porcelain. Okay. Yeah. Whoosh. Well, we got that figured yeah. out. I think. Yeah. For all you vinyl owners out there, please let, let us know if we're right or wrong. And yeah. And you know, and, you know when you do that, like subscribe and comment um, below. Just note that we're both going to get this. It's just like, you can't buy everything all at once. Once we started talking about this album, I was like, <laughs> how have I not picked this up? I just, I, I hadn't noticed it. I hadn't seen it. It would be one that I would pick up immediately. And as much as I hate to say it, I think that the version that of all places Walmart put out with like the purple yeah. and gold disc purple. is, it looks yeah. like a nice pressing, yeah. but I don't well, like Walmart as a company. Well, it was funny though, because if you go on their website, when I looked at it, um, there was a bunch of re- like, like. It, dude, it has like one and a half stars out of like 28 reviews. And I was like, is it a bad pressing? Like what's going on with it? But I clicked on it and I started reading some of the reviews. So they actually had um, an image that was up of it was a double colored disc. But the previous image they had up was a red, red disc and a blue disc. And so then people ordered it and they actually ended up getting whatever it is, the purple and the yellow. So people were pissed because they were like, hey, you know, I ordered it and expecting to get like the orange and blue disc or, you know, whatever it was. And it ends up coming up two different colors. And so and that's why people rated it so low. So I think if you do go there and you do pick it up, you can at least they, they have changed the image. So so the correct colors are showing. Um, but if you see the one and a half stars, like don't get scared off like it's a bad pressing or anything like that. I mean, I can't speak to it. And the other, th- that's why it has such a low rating. The other thing with that is if that's the worst thing that ever happens to you, that like your double LP of Californication is purple and gold instead of red and blue, like you're doing okay in life. So don't get too pissed. Oh, as long as it isn't I mean, scratchy. Not- <laughs> uh. 
uh, at least it wasn't classic black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What so. would you do then? All right. You'd listen to it like every on. other asshole. Poor Slim. All right. Yeah, we got porcelain. Um, dude, definitely slow the album down at this point. <laughs> mm-hmm. One know? thing I like um, is he uses the brush. You hear the... Oh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of <coughs> that, that sound is using the brushes. Now, did you read about the the premise of this song? I did. I did. It's very um, interesting. His encounter with this like woman who was strung out on heroin at the YMCA, and she just had this beautiful daughter and... Yeah, it, and it it you can and once you read that, I mean, the lyrics make more sense, you know, hundred percent, and and you can understand like the um How? the it's it's sort of the contrast, the juxtaposition yeah. of you know you have this you have this woman who's struggling and she you know it's like you got this kid and that's where you should be giving your love and your heart yeah. and your energy, but there's this other. You know, there's this drug that Demon, has just yeah. got its, it's, it's got its, you know, claws wrapped in, you know, you know, entrenched in you. And so, um, yeah, man, it's, it's definitely a sad song. Um, and it's something, what, what I also do like about, it, I mean, geez, think about how, you know, not, not only in the other members, of the band can just relate. To oh this. yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I yep. mean? So, um, you know, it, again, you know, instrumentally a, a very, very basic, basic song, um, but some really nice touches and very different than um, even some of the slower songs Red Hot, Red Hot Chili Peppers have sort of done. This one, this one definitely stands stands uh, stands alone yep. in just its style. And I everything. agree. So, and then you go into kind of I, I, it's tough. I don't know that I'd call this. This is sort of to me for them a real, real midpoint between funk and rock for them. Yeah, you know it's yeah. it's not totally funky, but uh, it has some elements of it's it. It's got the elements. Yeah, and it's 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 more rock, but um, yeah. Emit Remus, which always makes or, me think of Uncle Remus by Frank Zappa. But <laughs> oh, okay, which of course backwards is summertime, um, and yeah, it's funny because he says like summertime, you know, it, well London in the summertime. The, yeah, I mean basically, so dude, the, the song is inspired. He had a a, a brief relationship with uh mel c melanie c of the spice dude Girls. sporty and so i that's yeah. not who so, i expected so, so so i imagine he spent you know a good part of that summer over in london and it's funny because he talks about you know some of the places over there and everything he talks about primrose hill yeah and, and these, like, call, me, call me now we'll use song. a satellite you know like i, yeah. I kind of like that yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said English girl, American man. <laughs> yeah. What could be wetter uh, than? It's you know, it, it is kind of funny. It's just I don't know. It's just like a sort of a funny, funny, silly song. I'm sure it was a, I'm sure it was a really fun fling they had. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They used, but now you get into the, the funk, and there's no denying dude. it. Dude, I like dirt. Oh my god, right? I mean, dude, this song. I feel like this is in a weird way. This kind of is like pee on one hot minute, like just being such a weird song. Yeah, like it's it, it, it's just a weird song. It, it is, but I mean, obviously, pee is very different in its you know style and everything. But I know what the, you the mean. It, it's, it. Yeah, it's yeah, and in the way it comes up too, especially where it where it's placed in the album is really good. And burn yeah, burn <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, yeah. Yeah. and he kind of I don't know how, how would you describe how his vo- like it's not rap but it's it's it, I know it's got that there's a cadence. lot of it where the cadence is so much more rhythmic driven than tonal which is what I was saying about a lot of this album just in a lot of their music I mean it's um, sure. in the way he sings it's it's more driven by rhythm than tonality. And it's great because, yeah. you know, he uses very simple tonal shifts that work within the key signature. But but it, it you know, it, it's all about the yeah. rhythm. He's he's adding another flavor to that rhythm that's already being laid down pretty good by totally. the other three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, and, and we didn't really talk about this as much in the uh, what is it around the world when he does does the scat. But right same. At the end. Yeah. But but it, it, like that's the thing. Sometimes it, I mean. I like a lot of his lyrics and some of the things that he does, but sometimes it's it's not what he says, but how he says yeah, it. Yeah, sure. And how it kind of how it fits in again rhythmically, right? Yep. So um then where we go from oh dude, this velvet dude, glove. This velvet glove. Um dude, this is I don't know, man. This is one of my more favorite songs on the album too. I've just always really liked it, dude. I like the way the guitar sounds on it. Um again, it it 
it it moves along and, and but it does I, I take like the it. album down i think in terms of it's it's a little more somber and and dude yeah, i think I, it's the it is easily the first time you've heard and probably the well not the only time mm-hmm. but the first time you hear acoustic guitar Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 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 and that's yeah. what I there was is gonna say there. is well, they they did mention that there were very few overdubs uh, that right. they did, so this would have to be one of them with that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, it's funny too because I started. They didn't cite it this as a specific reference for what the song is about or anything, but Anthony Kiedis did have an, another love interest besides you know Melcy. Um, uh, is this woman who was a fashion designer and he, it was said that you know many of the songs that sort of examine love on this in this album are sort of like in reference and inspired by that relationship and i just think of the idea of like a velvet glove as you know almost like someone you have to treat very delicately and so it's like oh let me let me you know like yeah, yeah. like anytime you know somebody's like you know polishing jewelry or doing doing something like that yeah, it's like sure. oh you got to put you know put your your velvet glove yeah, on yeah sure and just make sure you got to cradle it and coddle it a little bit and i'm wondering you know anthony nikitas he's an emotional guy but he doesn't necessarily seem like he seems like a strong personality yeah you know um so i don't know i, I could be 100 percent off i have no idea but just that's kind of what i what i gathered from this one line that always stuck out to me that also i think talks about the whole bit of addiction and some of those struggles is it's such a waste to be wasted in the first place that's such a good a line to be that's a really good line. first place it is it is definitely uh <clears throat> dude dusting savior. off your savior um, Dude, this song just comes in like really abrasive. Oh, it it's, does. It's like, it does. It's just douche. Um, but I'll tell you what, this would be one song. Now, you know, spoiler alert, this is a, this is not my scratch. It probably would be my scratch. If it wasn't for that did. middle section. Oh, where it's like, dude. I know. I mean, that, that middle. That, yeah, that yeah. middle part is really Out cool. You know, dude, their harmonies are beautiful on this song. And and it's because of that transition. I know. Like, I just wait. I wait for it every I time. And I'm like, this is just amazing. I think that's a perfect ass- assessment. And it's not my scratch. Yeah. But I would agree with you. If it weren't for that middle part, it damn well might be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you, man. Uh, all right, dude. dude. Uh, m- purple stain. Maybe the other best or at least top three. Funkiest. I mean, come on. Yeah. Okay. Okay, dude, this one is just funky as all hell. And dude, so it's funny because in it, there's this it's nasty, riff. like lyrically, dude, there's this there's this riff in it. But dude, the riff actually, after, I, I, I imagine it's the bass, but it actually sounds like when Anthony Kiedis sings, I like dirt when he's like, burr, 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 burr. oh, yeah, like, there's that riff in this song. And I'm just like, oh, it's oh, it was just kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but man, dude, at the end. The, the end section is just incredible. Like Chad, you hear Chad Smith just really just let it rip and let loose on the yeah. drums. And then they all dude, they all three just start rocking out. It's a great like ending section, man. It re- it's really good. And it, yeah, it's just it, it is. It, I would say lyrically, it is easily the dirtiest one because they talk about, Dirt. of course, there's a million sexual sexual innuendos in the album. I mean, that's kind of, you know, like that was a surprise going into it. But this one is very blatant. I'm shocked. <laughs> it is. It is. It definitely is. But I like how um, I, one of the things that I've always liked is how he just calls out John Frusciante, like in a good way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Right. right. John Frusciante. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I like that. Yeah. It is cool. Now we get to dude. I know, I know this ain't your scratch. Oh, and it ain't mine either. This is be a dude, dick if it was. Yeah. To me, this is like, I think for me, like the most fun song. Oh, and it's just short. Because it comes in just, so abrasive. Dude, 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 dude. <laughs> but, but but in such a different way than like Savior yeah. or something like like this one's just like man I, I don't know dude it's just it, it's it's so good the way he just like hammers in with the lyrics because also usually songs don't start like, like that boom right with yep. the lyrics you know and this starts um, with everything you know. all at once yeah and uh, and then dude but 
the harmonies, man. Well, yeah, Detroit, when they slow dude. it down, oh. and it, well, and they, I guess they don't it's, even slow it down. They just kind of tone down the music. And dude, it's dude, Flea's right bass playing during that part time. is incredible. Oh, dude, it's yeah, it's so great. Yeah, it's it really, so really solid. Yep. No, he's he's really good. Yeah. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Um, now we get to the last track, man. Road tripping. Now I I um, really like this too because to me this is also like what uh, some of the thematic elements about like just their journey, right? This is sure. this is that. Yep. In one, th- it's a great summation. It is. In one thing, um, although one thing that did catch me is. He says he's road tripping with his two favorite allies, so I assume that Chad Smith is not. No, so here, well, the reason Chad Smith actually won, Chad Smith did not go with them. It was based on a a, a road trip surfing. They were going surfing at Big Sur. So one, oh. Chad Smith had a previous commitment, and two, he wasn't that into surfing. So it kind of makes sense. So it's him and Frashante and Flea? Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of, because he's the one who's like, has his shit together more honestly like yeah. <laughs> and you saw they that even said that like in blood sugar yeah Sex Magic and you saw that in the right? documentary like he's huh. he's awesome and he's he's absolutely a part of that thing but you know he's also probably not going to be tempted to like blow an eight ball up his nose like he just he just had his shit more together than the other ones and yeah. so yeah. i think it it kind of makes sense in that way but dude yeah. I thought it was a Mellotron, but reading the credits, it's a Chamberlain. Now, a Chamberlain is actually like a pre-Mellotron where it's still a tape-based sampler uh, that was, I think, in existence slightly before the Mellotron. But it's the same sound, right? They're using like flutes and strings. And to me, that that absolutely makes the song. It it, it gives it this this haunting sort of quality because those instruments... It wasn't the same as getting a string section. It was, it's, it's, it's a little, there's, there's quirks to it. The notes, it, yeah. it doesn't all blend together perfectly. It's, it's, it's off at time not off, but it's, it's, it's just not perfect. And that's what's yeah. awesome about what's it. supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a perfect, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's one of my favorite songs on the album. I'm glad they put it like oh, at, at the, the end. end. It, it would um, have to be. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think anywhere on the album I would just I it, it wouldn't fit as well. Um, I you know it certainly wouldn't be my scratch. But if I had such a hard time scratching this album that if potentially if you had moved it to another spot, oh, I don't know if I said I, you know that I'd be like ah, it doesn't really fit. Yeah, you know, or, or you know, in that spot. But this is but it, absolutely it fits perfect. at the end. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. So, so with that said, I feel like you're on the tee. I, I yeah I, I, th- I think I was on I, the T last time and I think this time okay. it's you. I, I think I am. I think I am. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and scratch Emit Remus. Um, really? I I had yeah I you know I had a hard time um, with this one. Um, you know there were a few songs. There's a few songs that have parts that are sort of saving graces, kind of like we talked about with Savior. Okay. Um, but um, yeah I I don't know I I just thought. You know, I, I don't know if I need a song essentially about Anthony and, you know, whatever, Mel C, Sporty, you know, their their love relationship and everything like that. And, um, you know, I, I think it's fine, but it's this dude. This was a really, really hard album for me to do. Well, that's really why hard, we pick so. these ones. We don't pick the ones that would be easy because damn it, you can just throw that yeah. one, you know, right in yeah. the trash. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and then I would say now if we're asking like what my favorite that, song that is. was gonna I should have asked that first but that is my Damn. next question, dude I don't that's that's really tough man I don't know I, easily I like parallel I'll, oh man I don't know probably easily maybe this is your favorite yeah this velvet glove interesting but I like Calif I like Californication a lot too man I like the lyrics on it. Um, I mean, dude, right on time, dude. I, it's it's hard to pick like one one favorite song because you know they're just all so good. I know, and so, it, I was yeah. I was kind of at that same crossroads because I love all the all the funky songs that they do. But if I had to pick a favorite, I for yeah. some reason, other side, 
uh, is, is like sort of an interesting summation of a lot of things. And that one That's to true. me was always my favorite one, even though yeah. I love all the all the other stuff that that one just always stuck with me because it was it was just different. And, uh, yeah. yeah, almost almost a tie yeah. between that and parallel universe yeah. real close. OK, yeah. Well, do I get to guess what I think your scratch is? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Oh, dude, scar tissue. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You hate every big hit single from like every band. So. <sighs> That's not fair, but I just, to me, this one was the step in a direction that made me lose interest in the group. That's why. This song was? Mm-hmm. This is the song that like basically started putting them back on the map again. Mm, yeah okay it might have it for, for it was the first people single. that listen I mean, that take their information from the radio maybe sure but those well, of us who actually got the album it, yeah. you know it, it may it, like to me it's not that it's a bad Did you buy the album before you heard that song um i don't know i know it i don't think i did it, it was probably dude back in 99 it was that was probably back in the day where they were playing singles before you could get the album yeah, that's true. That that is so, true, and it, it was yeah. never but, my favorite. But it was hearing the other ones where I was like, "Oh man, this is this is something." Um, yeah. Oh, did you also read the thing about how before this album was released, they just like were randomly going and playing like high school dances, and for no, but that's awesome. for admission to the dance, they would the students would have to write down like what their thoughts on how they could end like bullying and like beating up on kids because it was kind of a response to like columbine and shit wow yeah i I read that and i thought that was really cool because like how sweet would that be if you just show up to high school dance you're like oh here's your band you're like that's the red hot chili peppers wow this is this an 80s movie like you know what i mean i bet i bet they weren't wearing just socks yeah 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 there's probably a dress coat but very cool very cool all right so we're not going to ot I go to OT. Everyone, let us know below what your favorite tracks are and what is one track you would scratch off this album. That's just how the game is played. So please yep. let us know. Like, subscribe, down and below. comment below. I think that wraps it up, Graham. The Dude and Grim Show. The Dude and Grim Show. Scratch a track is produced by The Dude and Grim. Additional music provided by Moore. That's dot, 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 M O R E. And the Tims, T I M N Z. Copyright 2022. The Dude and Grim Show.